What is up everybody, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to another video, hopefully the second one in one day. Um, as you can see up here, we're going to be using Vue.js to create a drag and drop um, application. If you watched the last video where we created React, the exact, literally the exact same app, but in React, this time we're going to be doing it in um, Vue.js. So, in the last video, we basically created this simple card dragging and dropping, like kind of like how Trello boards work, obviously less advanced with all the extra bits. Um, and we're going to be recreating that, so let's get straight to it. First things first, let's stop the current surfer. Let's make sure you're in the directory you want to create an app with, and then make sure you have the few CLI installed. I'm not going to go over how to do that because I've done that in a previous video. So I'm going to say few create and I'm gonna call this Few D and D. And now this is gonna create this app. I'm gonna choose the default for now. Um, and this is gonna create the app. As you can see, I'm using the Few CLI 3.8.4, which okay. Now once that's done, we're gonna say CD Few hyphen D and D. Now once we're in there, I'm gonna use code dots uh, in my terminal to open up my VS Code editor and in few, oh, what did it open? Nah. Let me cd into few d and d. Let me close this and let's do that again. Code dot. This time I'm in the right directory. Now I'm going to open this up at the top here. So, like with any few project, to start to run a development surfer, we say npm run surf and it's going to surface a static or not static a few js um surfer development surfer so while that's doing or oh, it's already done we're going to go in here and we're going to cleanse this folder so we're going to delete that we're going to delete hello world we're going to go into main no we're not we're going to go into app.view and we're going to remove both of these inside of here we're going to remove hello world app and the component from inside there and we're going to replace this style with our own styles. Now, these styles we actually created in the last video. Again, if you haven't seen the last video, you don't have to to do this video, but you'll understand a bit better what we're actually doing. So here you'll see I'm going to reset loads of things and set some bo bo uh, the box size into border box. We're going to add a color to the background. We've got this flex box container, which we're going to create, which is going to hold our uh, boards inside. We then have the boards and then we have the cards. So as you can see, that's all it is. It's very simple CSS, um, very basic. And we're going to continue on with that. So in here, we want to say main dot flex box. And that's all we've got to do right now. So inside of our components, we're going to create. Well, actually, first, let's save. Let's right here. Hello. Hit save. Go for a refresh, and there we go. We see hello. So this is what we're, we've got, what we're dealing with right now. Now in components, let's create a component called board dot view, and in here we need to create our template. So our template is going to be a diff, and in here we're going to say slot. So if you're coming from a React background, it's the same as saying props.children. So basically, oh God, I can't even spell, but basically what it means is when we call this boards thing, when we go board, we can actually write inside of here and close the tag. So like how paragraph tags work and stuff like that, we're going to have content we can put inside of this slot, which in our case for the board is going to be um, the cards. Now, in here, we're going to pass through an ID. So we're going to bind the ID. So this little denotion is the same as doing fee hyphen bind ID. We're then going to say class equal to board. We're then going to do an offense. So we're going to say drag over dot prevent. So these are really handy tools. So at stands for an offense. So this says the offense of drag over. So when we drag something over this, we're going to prevent the defaults. So this year we press D and you can see we've got capture. Uh, so this for like event listeners, native, I'm not sure what that does, once. The event will be triggered at most once. So this will only be triggered once. Passive uh, indicates that the event listener will never call prevent default same as event listener's passive option. 
prevent, which will basically prevent the default. Self, which only triggered handle if event.target is the element itself. And stop, which will stop propagation. We just need prevent. And that's all. We don't actually have to write any code for that. That one is all we have to write. Then we're going to get the drop event. So when we actually drop, we're going to prevent the default. But this time we're going to set up a method called drop. So we're going to go down here and we're going to write script and basically pass through some props. In this props, we're going to say ID because that's the only prop we're passing through because we're going to have some dynamic IDs. We're then going to say methods. And down here, we're going to create the drop method. We're going to sell it to an arrow function, which passes through an event. Now, if you watched the last video, you'll understand what I'm about to write here. It's the exact same code. But if not, then this I'm going to explain as go. So we're going to, how the boards are going to work is we're going to drop the um, card on top of this board and it's going to pass through this drop event. And on this event, we're going to say const card ID is equal to e dot data transfer. So when a drop event happens, when a drag start event happens and a drop event happens, we get this data transfer um, event which is passed through. And with this, we can actually pass data between um, the card and the uh, or the the drag start event and the drop event. And then here we're going to say get data. And we're going to say card underscore ID because we're going to be setting the card ID when we actually pick up the card. Now after that, we're going to say const card is equal to document dot get element by ID. And we're going to pass through the card ID because here's the element we've passed through. We're then going to say card dot style dot display is equal to block and the reason we're doing this is because when we actually start dragging the element we want to hide the element when we start dragging the card but for this reason we need to set back to block once we actually drop the element and then we're going to say e dot target so this dot append child card so let's explain this again so we're setting up this card id which we're getting from a data transfer using the get data method and we're passing through a key of card ID. We need to remember this ID because we're going to be reusing it when we get our card, when we create our card component. Then we're going to use, we're going to we're going to get the card element by saying document .get element by ID, and then we're using this card ID. We're then going to say the card which we've dragged and dropped. We're going to set style back to block because when we actually start dragging the card, we're going to set it to be display none which sounds weird, but basically you'll understand what happens when I show it to you. We're then gonna say e.target.appendChild, so we're gonna add this card element to this um, board. And that is how we drag and drop. And this can be done with more than two boards. You can drag and drop between as many boards as you like. You can drag and drop as many cards as you like onto as many boards as you like. Um, and you can set up some, you know, some uh, validation as well to make sure some cards can't go in some places and stuff like that but for now we're focusing on the basics and just to let you know this is all we need to do for this component so we're going to close this component now and we're going to create a new component called card.view now in card.view it's also super simple we're just going to say template and then we're going to say dot card and now we're actually going to break this down oh. And again, we're going to get the ID and set it to ID for a prop. We're then going to say draggable, and we're going to set this equal to a draggable component. So this is a way, so because we're binding this, it means we can actually change some cards so they're not draggable and some are draggable. So if you don't want a draggable cards, you will change this variable to false on the um, app component when we pull it in. We're then going to get another thing called drag start. And the drag start is going to be passed through a drag start method. And then we're going to get the drag over event like we did in the previous um, board, I believe it was. So the drag over, we prevented the default. This time, we're not going to prevent Vigo. We're going to stop, um, which stands for stop pageant uh, propagation. Propagation, propagate, pro 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 I can't say it out loud. My brain doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> and then here, we're going to say slot. So... This slot, again, is basically if we were to write out card on our front end, we can write anything inside and it will appear inside the card component. 
Now, let's create our script and let's get our prop. So the only prop we again need this time is ID, but this time we also need draggable because that is what we're passing through up here. We're then gonna get the new methods and these methods are gonna say drag start, which is equal to another um, event. And we're gonna say const target, so it's equal to e.target, which is the self. So this card, we're gonna set it to target. We're gonna say e.data transfer dot set data. So if you remember previously in our board, we said e.transfer.get data card. This time we're gonna set the data, which is like setting, if you have to use local host or local storage, sorry, you'll know that you can set and get items from the local storage. So it's the same thing, but between objects and the drag event. So in here, we're gonna say card ID. Now this card ID needs to match the board ID, but it can be anything you want. We could rename this to CID, along as in here we said CID. I'm going to undo that because I want it to say card ID because it makes a bit more sense. Now, when we set data, we need to pass a second parameter, which is um, target.id. So we're going to get this target ID and we're going to pass it through data. So this can be anything. It will be converted into a string or of types because it only stores strings. I believe it only stores strings. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and now we're going to say set timeout. Now, you're going to ask me why am I doing a set timeout if you watch my last video. As I said, the React one, the, you'll understand why. But this time we're going to say target.style.display is equal to none. So like I said, remember when I said we're going to sell it to display none? Now, this is where we're going to do it. Now, the reason we're doing it um, over here is because... Well, the reason we're doing it in a set timeout is because if we didn't do it in a set timeout, this is going to call instantly. And if we had a set timeout, it's actually going to add a delay to the code. So when we start dragging, it would be invisible. But I'm going to demonstrate this once we've actually built the rest of the app. So now if we refresh, there's still nothing on page because we need to import our new components. So if we say here, import board from dot slash component slash board, and if we copy this and we say card from card and we pass through the components, obviously card or board, we'll do board first, uh, board. There we go. Now we can use them in here. So what we want to write inside of our actual app is, let's give it some space. We're gonna say board with the ID of board one so now anything in here is actually that slot uh, component we pass through here. So anything we write in here is where that will be placed. Um, and we're gonna write card, because we're gonna pass through a card, which can have the ID of card hyphen one. And we're gonna pass the draggable of true, so it's draggable. Now in here, we're gonna add just a simple paragraph, which is gonna say card one. And now we're gonna copy this whole thing and we're gonna create our second board. And we're gonna rename this to card two. Now, if we go back over here, you'll see it's already done. And look, we can drag and drop and drag and drop and drag and drop. And as you can see, when we first go to drag it, you can see the card which was on the board has disappeared and now we're holding card. Let me show you what happens if we go into our card and we disable all of this, this display none. Um, thing so we don't actually hide it so if we refresh and we drag you'll see now there's two cards there's one there and one in my hand now this card is actually a copy the one in my hand and the one well this actually card is a reference to this card so when we drop it here it moves the whole card over here but it kind of it can be kind of confusing so that's why we want to display none the issue with just saying target.style.display none is because now when we drag you'll see it's disappeared completely the reason for that is because we're displaying it to none before we've actually made a reference or a copy. So now if we set timeout, we give our function enough time to make a copy before calling this. So now if we refresh, now you can see we drag, the original has disappeared, but we've got the reference in our hand and we can drop it around. Same with the two. So as you can see, 
That is why we need to do this target.style.display none and import target.style.display block. Now, that is literally it. Again, guys, these have been two really quick videos. That's why I'm uploading them both in one day. But I hope you did enjoy this video and I hope you enjoyed the last video's um, bouncy intro, I'd call it. It was very fun to do that. Hurt my back a little, but I hope you enjoyed it. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you did like the video, then don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be the first person on the scene, then hit that notification bell to be able to get a notification as soon as I upload a video. Other than that, guys, don't forget to uh, drop some comments and uh, let me know what you thought about this video, if you have any feedback or anything like that. And without further ado, if you want, thank you for watching and peace out.